There once was a man who owned a large farm. This satisfaction led him abroad in search for something more. Diamonds. When his money was spent and hope lost, in wretchedness, he drowned himself. His land was soon purchased, and one day, the new farmer noticed a curious gleam in the garden brook. The same gleam found in the stones that ruined his plows. It soon became clear that the farm, abandoned for the sake of diamonds, in fact, hosted within itself acres of diamonds. Good morning, Bethel. Pura vida, Bethel. For all of those that don't know a second language like I do, um, translation, pure life. Pure life. Pura pure vida means pure life. It is the um, national slogan of Costa Rica. And uh, those that haven't been around, uh, why not? Um, but uh, Julie and I, uh, two weeks ago, tomorrow, flew to Costa Rica to uh, minister in that amazing nation. And um, right after we set in Sunday night, uh, two new pastors here at Bethel, Pastor Tim and Pastor Cindy, um, Pastor Tim Maddox and uh, Cindy Morrison. And uh, so the next morning, early in the morning, we loaded up and flew to Costa Rica. And I would like my wife to come up and just share a little bit about that journey. So come on, give it up for my wife, Julie. Good morning, family. Uh, we spent nine amazing days in Costa Rica, fell in love with this beautiful country. And yet as beautiful as the country is, the peace are absolutely even more beautiful. Amen. Um, so I have to confess to you, uh, before I got on that plane, most of you, well, let me say this. I don't know if you know this. Many of you probably do because you've been on this journey with us. But we launched two of our three arrows uh, in a matter of two weeks. And that was a lot for a mom's heart, you know. One off to an internship in Orlando at a church there. And our other daughter uh, launched her launched that arrow to college, to university on the other side of the nation. And so it was a lot for my heart um, to do that. And um, I was really sad, very, very deeply sad. Um, and so that heaviness, that spirit of sadness, I was really carrying. And, um, and so a few days before, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to go to Costa Rica. This is terrible timing. We've been traveling so much. A lot's going on, and it's just, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, Lord. Uh, and yet, I, by the grace of God, this was all a conversation with just with he and I. I didn't say this out loud, but I just, I spoke to my soul, and I said, get back there where you belong, all these emotions, and I'm getting on this plane. And so, by the grace of God, I got on that plane with my husband, um, full of sadness, and by the end of the trip, as I'm flying home back from Costa Rica, I cannot tell you the amount of joy uh, that I feel the work of healing that God did in me, and I'll tell you why. It's because I got out of myself. I stopped looking inward, thinking inward, thinking consumed with myself and, and, and what was going on in my life, and I poured out, and I gave out, and I ministered, and I prayed, and, 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 and thought about other people. And because of that, God took me, so good. and he broke off that spirit of sadness and heaviness, and he gave me a garment of praise. And that's what he does. And I'll tell you, I could and maybe I will develop a whole message around that because it was great. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about Costa Rica and all that God did in the next couple minutes. Um, Mike and I were able to minister uh, to 
two, in two different conferences of pastors and leaders. If you don't know this about my husband, it's one of the many gifts that he walks in. If I can just talk about you for a minute, love. Um, Feel but free. <laughs> he doesn't have a problem with that. Um, he has an anointing and a gift and a calling to unify the body. He's done it here in this city, continues to do it in this city, and is increasing, has done that work in Rocky Point, and now we are, by the grace of God, able to begin that work in Costa Rica, in San Jose, in that greater San Jose area, in Costa Rica. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so we had two conferences with pastors where he ministered powerfully in the first one, and, and both of us were able to minister and speak at the second one. Um, of course, pray for them, prophesy over them, minister to them, which was awesome. Um, God divinely connected us, <laughs> like only he can, uh, with key pastors in this region. It was outrageous. I'm like, I, my mind was blown day after day after day. I'm like, Lord, only you can do these kind of connections. Um, so that was amazing. Um, one of the pastors I'm gonna talk about and I'll show you, and they're already up here, this beautiful couple in the corner, uh, Pastor Caesar and his wife, Vanessa, this is their home. So we were um, privileged <laughs> to be in their home. Uh, they live in one of the most impoverished areas of San Jose. Um, this is their house. So this is the outside of their house right here. Uh, this is their, one of their few rooms that they have. In this room, they feed with, this is so beautiful, with the very little that they have, they sow, they give, they pour out their life. They feed 105 children every day, Monday through Friday. Let me tell you, the first time we were in that home, I barely could hold it together. I, 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 I was so moved. Um, they, they were doing a beautiful work there. Um, the second time we went back, a couple days later, we were able to bring with us, we went shopping um, one afternoon, and we were able to buy many, many, many things that they need. We were able to deliver them to them uh, and bless them, which was amazing. Um, this is their kitchen right here. This is the kitchen where they cook all these meals, y'all. Um, one of the things that we're praying about right now is, is how can we get fresh vegetables and fruits to them, uh, because what they're mainly eating is rice and pastas with some meat, um, and how we can get some nutritional um, supplements into these children um, to, to help uh, aid them. So pray with us uh, on that. What else do I want to share? I don't know. There's so many more stories. Um, I mean, we were able to just love people. There was one gal that I was able to pray with and minister some inner healing with and, and hug her and embrace her. Um, and she's sobbing. And one of the things she said to me was, I've been praying and dying for a mother's hug. <laughs> and I was just able to give that. And so for us, um, to be able to see, uh, I mean, why in the world God would come, would, would want to use us? I have no idea, right? But we just are saying yes. God's opening the door, and we're saying, Lord, whatever you say, whatever you want, here we are. We want to be used. And so um, we are very excited that God has opened this door. There is much more ahead for us as a family um, to, to go. We're going we're gonna to have a missions trip. We will do our annual, it'll be our 10th one in Rocky Point in June of 2023, and then July 2023, a month later, we're going to take a team to San Jose, Costa Rica. And so maybe that will be you. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we love to give gifts here at Bethel. We're gift givers. And so we have brought, I searched all of San Jose, all of Costa Rica, went up into the uh, Volcano Mountains regions, went to Starbucks only factory um, that they have or, or, or farmed there. 
all over to find the greatest Costa Rica coffee, which is being served in our cafe today for free for everyone. So make sure you go grab some Costa Rican coffee. Um, those in the back row, you probably can't see this fuzz on my face. I think it's the coffee. I think it's the coffee. But here's the good news, ladies. My wife drank some of the coffee, and she's got no fuzz. So you're safe. So enjoy the Costa Rican coffee, and consider praying about going next July to Costa Rica with us when we return to this amazing nation that God has opened the doors. He's just opened the doors, and... Um, we didn't even knock on it. It was just an open door, and that's all I'm looking for at this season of my life. I'm not even knocking on doors. Unless God says knock on a door, I, I don't need any more doors to open. I just want to walk in the ones that God's opening in my life. Amen? And so we'd love for you to come. I mean, incredible, amazing open doors for the gospel to advance. And so, hallelujah. There you go. Well, we're going to finish our series, Acres of Diamonds, today. Um, it's, I think, been an amazing series, um, if I do say so myself. Um, and I didn't preach the whole series. Pastor Israel was here last week, preached an incredible message. In fact, we were joining you in service online uh, after we had ministered in a church in Costa Rica, which is amazing that we could worship with you on our phones driving uh, in Costa Rica. It was absolutely amazing. So um, if you're not here, you should be watching online, okay? Because I'm not asking you to do something I'm not doing and not willing to do. So it's amazing. It's not the same as being here, but um, it's our close second. So uh, today, I've entitled this message in our final uh, sermon in our series, Acres of Diamonds, Diamonds that last forever. Diamonds that last forever. And so the, the title, Acres of Diamonds, if you haven't been here, um, we, that title came from a book that came from a lecture that came from a story. And that story was that of a gentleman, a farmer, a gentleman in Africa who owned a farm, a prosperous farm. Ali Afred was his name. And um, he was content, he was prosperous, he had a beautiful family, until one day he heard about diamonds, and how if you had just a few diamonds, you could have many farms. And um, that night he went to bed in, um, impoverished, because now he realized what he didn't have. He forgot what he had, he forgot what he had, and all he could think about was what he didn't have. And he sold his farm, put his family up, and he searched through Africa, then to India, Palestine, Europe, only to find himself bankrupt, writing a letter to his family in total desperation and depression that he'd spent all the money, found nothing, and then he threw himself into a river and died. Tragic story. But what's even more tragic is the gentleman who bought the farm. He one day took a stone that had a little glisten in it, and he put it over the mantle in his house. And one day, one of the diamond miners in the area, because there were diamond mines in the area of the farm, he was in at this new owner's house. And he walked over to the mantle, and he said, where did you find this? And he took it, and he took his knife out, and he, he carved it a little bit. He said, this is the largest diamond I have ever seen. He said, what? That's not a diamond? He said, yes, it is. He goes, I've got those things all over my farm. I'm constantly kicking them out of the way of my plow. That led to the largest diamond mine, most prosperous diamond mine ever found. What an incredible and tragic story of the man who did not recognize that he had acres of diamonds. And so in week one, we talked about how God opened our eyes, open our eyes to the treasure that you are. The greatest thing that could ever happen in any of our lives is that our eyes were open 
to the pearl of great price, right? That our eyes were open, that our ears somehow heard the the message and the story of Jesus, how he came 2,000 years ago and he lived a life that we were all supposed to live, but we couldn't. And then he died to death. We all deserved to die so that we wouldn't have to. And our eyes were open to Jesus, the greatest acres of diamonds, the greatest treasure. And we were willing to give our lives up for that treasure. Amen? And then we became treasure boxes. He put that treasure inside of us. And last week, Pastor Israel did an amazing job. If you didn't listen to it, you need to listen to it, and you need to listen to it again if you have. Talked about how there are diamonds amongst us. Your spouse, your children, your extended family, your church family are full of acres of diamonds. And yet so often the devil tries to deceive us and, and, and not let us see the treasures that we have in our lives. Amen? And so today what I'd like to do is we have talked about how these acres of diamonds are within us. These acres of diamonds are around us or, 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 or among us. I want to talk today how there's acres of diamonds all around us and how God wants us to be diamond miners. He wants us to be diamond miners. He wants us to discover diamonds, not kick the stones and those things that, that don't appear to be diamonds out of our path but actually cherish them and help others see the treasure that they are because they're a treasure. Why are they a treasure? Because God decided that they were a treasure. How do we know that? Because God was willing to pay any, at any price. There was no price he wasn't willing to pay for these acres of diamonds throughout the earth. For he so loved the world that he gave all. And so my hope is today that God would open our eyes and our ears and give us a heart of love and compassion to see the acres of diamonds, not just walk by those diamonds in our lives, but actually recognize those and treat people like diamonds, everyone we encounter, that we would treat them like a diamond that they are. Because that's when life gets really exciting and really rich. We are rich, church. We're rich and we live rich world full of diamonds waiting to be discovered. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 2. It's where we'll begin in the scripture. John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Two days after there was a wedding in the town of of Canaan in Galilee, Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his followers were also invited to the wedding. When all of the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus answered, dear woman, why come to me? My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. In that place, there were six stone water jars and the Jews used in their washing ceremony each jar held about 20 or 30 gallons jesus said to the servants fill the jars with water so that they filled the jars to the top then he said to them now take some out and give it to the master of the feast so they took the water to the master and when he tasted it the water had become wine he did not know where the wine had come from but the servants who had brought the water knew The master of the wedding called the bridegroom and said to him, People always serve the best wine first. Later, after the guests have been drinking a while, they serve the cheaper wine. But you have saved the best wine till now. In Canaan of Galilee, Jesus did his first miracle. There he showed his glory, and his followers believed in him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have 
this story. And that you've given us the word of God full of stories of how to live, full of stories that show us how loved we are and that we have a purpose. Today, Holy Spirit, open our eyes and our ears again to God speaking to us. Holy Spirit, help me get out of the way of God's word and let God's word do the work in us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, so this is the first miracle recorded in the Gospel of John. And the, the, the story tells us that, that Jesus is like, it's not yet my moment, my time. But what's amazing, it didn't stop him from loving his mom. Now, this was probably a family wedding. This was, this was probably... Uh, a wedding that his family was a part of putting together and serving at. And so there would have been great shame that would have come upon his family and his mom um, if they had run out of wine, if they had run out of grape juice, right? It, 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 would, it would have been a, a terrible situation. And so Mary said, just do whatever Jesus says. He'll make it right. Jesus, Mary casted her cares upon Jesus. What a beautiful story. What a beautiful miracle to just show the heart of God. That the smallest things matter to God. Now, when we give our cares to God, it doesn't always work out exactly the way we thought it should or wanted it to. But you can know this for sure that he cares. And that he can work all things out for good. That God can make every situation in your life that you give to him work out for good. Your good and the good of others. This is a guarantee. But the part I want to just take a moment and and, and hope that maybe you can see is that Jesus cares. He cares about the embarrassment that might come upon his family. He cares about people not um, having needs met or desires met. He's not against that. He's not against having a good time. Hallelujah. He's at a wedding, and the introduction in his ministry begins at a celebration. And that's a whole other message that I'd love to preach, but not today. But he cares. And what did Jesus, what did he acknowledge in doing this miracle? Many things, but one thing I want to point out. He recognized that all of those people were diamonds, especially his mom. Especially his mom. (laughs) Mom, it's not my... Okay. Here we go. It begins. My ministry begins today. And the result was they believed. You know, if I look back at the amazing opportunities that God has given me to lead people to Jesus, most of those came as a result of me first expressing how much I loved them and cared about them and showed in a very practical way. Even in my preaching, that I would pray for people that I haven't even met in a way that is heartfelt. Now, I can't manufacture that love. I love you because God loves you. If God didn't love you, I probably wouldn't. Okay? (laughs) Can I just get real? And here's the deal. You don't want me to love you because I love you. You want me to love you because God loves you. Because my love is fickle. My love is not faithful or secure. But his love is. Amen? So you want me to love you and you want me to be committed to you because God's committed to you. 
And because God loves you. And because God has put his love in my heart for you. And this is how God can put his love in my heart for a a people and a nation I've never been to. Costa Rica. And because of that imparting of his love and then going and just loving people. Loving people into the kingdom of God. Look, I am convinced, okay? And maybe I'm thinking too highly of myself, but here's the deal. It's not about me. I believe if you're around me long enough, you're going to get saved. That you, the, the longer you're around me, the less chance you have of not receiving Jesus. Okay? And it's not because... I'm all that great. It's because Jesus is all that great. And when you're hanging out with me, you're hanging out with Jesus. Because everywhere I go, I bring Jesus. Because when you bring Jesus to the party, the party is real and alive and leaves no sorrows to it. No sorrows are added to it. When God blesses you, when God pours out his blessing in your life, man, there's no sorrows added to it. But you've been to some parties. And after those parties, there were many sorrows added unto them, weren't they, Josh? (laughs) Weren't they, Cruz? (laughs) But not Jesus' parties. So, do you see the diamond, Jesus? Do you see the diamond within you? Do you see the diamonds among you? And do you see the diamonds all around? There's a story of a young girl named Linda. Linda had a friend who was out riding her bike with all day, and she was supposed to be home at 5 o'clock for dinner. That was the routine. And she wasn't home at 5. She got home at 5.30, and Mom wasn't very happy about that. She was supposed to be home at 5 for dinner. But Linda said, I'm sorry, Mom, but uh, my friend needed me. Her, her bike broke down. Her bike broke down. And Mom's like, that's ridiculous. Linda, what do you know about fixing a bike? How could you help your friend with that bike? And she said, Mom, I cried with my friend about her broken bike. She needed me. She couldn't fix the bike, but she did what she could do. See, she recognized that her friend was a diamond. And Linda shined as a diamond for a friend. Do you recognize the diamonds all around you? The opportunities you have that we have every single day? Or do you see them as stones that you just got to get out of your way? But these are diamonds. See, we have a saying around here at Bethel, we eat problems for lunch. See, those things that others see as problems, burdens, what if our eyes were turned into, these are potential diamonds. And God wants to use me to be a diamond in this diamond in the rough's life right now. Pastor Walter, one of our pastors of our Messianic congregation, On Saturdays, he shared this story with me um, this week, and he he said this is a well-known story in in Denver, out of the VA, VA hospital, and it was about two gentlemen that were um, in very critical um, condition, both had ammonia and were being treated, and they were both roommates in a a hospital, and there was only one window in the hospital, and that um, one of the patients his bed was in front of the window and the other patient was uh, looking at a wall and they, they couldn't get out of bed. They were that sick. And the nurses would come in and help the, the patient that was in front of the, the window um, uh, occasionally. And, and so they propped him up and he could see out the window. And he would share what he saw 
with his roommate. He shared how he would see that, that he was looking at the, the beautiful skies and the, and the, and the Denver skyline and the, and the mountains and, and the birds and trees. And, and he had an amazing imagination and, and description of what he would see with his eyes. And at first, the roommate was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Oh, it's just a little comfort to, to, to imagine something else than what he was going through and the pain. But then, after a few days, he was like, why can't I be in front of the window? Why, why does he get to be the one who gets to, to have the bed in front of the window? And then he fought that off, and he's like, oh, that's, that's just being selfish. And, but, but then those feelings came back up, and he, they overwhelmed him to where he became bitter about, this isn't fair. Life's not fair. It's not fair that I, that I, have, to, that I have to lay here, and he gets to lay over there. And one night, in the middle of the night, he heard his roommate struggling to breathe and 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 the remote fell out of his roommate's hand and and he had the the remote and and he could have pushed the the button for to, to get the nurses in to attend to his roommate but he was so envious and bitter that he's sat he didn't push the button the time went by He heard him struggling, and then he no longer heard him struggling. The next morning, the nurses came in and found his roommate dead. Took him out of the room, and after some time, he asked the nurse, hey, is there any way I can be moved in front of the window? The nurse said, well, for sure, absolutely, and they rolled him over in front of the window, and they propped him up. And he looked out the window, and what did he see? Not a skyline, not mountains, not birds or trees, just a brick wall. See, his roommate was a diamond. He was a diamond with an amazing imagination, and he made up what he saw. He made up, he knew it was out there. But he shared his imagination, that gift that he had with his roommate. You know, the Bible says if you don't recognize what you have in your life, even what you have, you will lose. You have to settle this. At the very youngest age, I taught my kids, kids, life is not fair. And you should be happy about that because you don't deserve a mom like you have. You don't deserve a dad like you have. And more than that, you don't deserve what Jesus has done for you. See, if life was fair, we'd all be going someplace none of us wants to go. But it's not, because God is loving and just. Diamonds. Man. Baby, I hope you don't get mad at me. But we had the most amazing time in Costa Rica. God moved and used us powerfully as a team ministering. And we just had a blast. And then we're, we're, we're flying back in our last stretch. In, and we have this moment where... I felt like my wife didn't honor me in a way that she should have. And this is very humbling, and I just go, I, I, it hurt me. It hurt me. It wasn't really that big a deal, but I made it a big deal. And it led to the next few hours of the flight, like cold. And then I struggled. It was like, it hurt more. And then I stopped seeing the treasure my wife was. Now, praise the Lord, I I don't think I went to bed angry, but I was hurt. And it's amazing. Look, life brings hurts. 
And you can acknowledge those hurts and you can even mourn those hurts. You should. And what I didn't do is I didn't mourn it with God. I didn't go to God and lament how my feelings got hurt. I mean, I'll just be real because I'm prideful. Like I'm thinking, I feel like a wuss that I got hurt. Okay, can I just, man, you know, you're with me, right? I mean, it's like the fact that I, I'm hurt because my wife didn't respect me enough. Okay, like how pathetic is that? It's pathetic, but you know it's real. We've all been hurt. And, and, and my pride got to me. I don't want to be hurt. Let some beautiful, petite, soft, kind woman hurt me. <laughs> but I got my feelings hurt. And that hurt, because I didn't lament it, and didn't process it right, led to me stop seeing what a treasure even if it was for 10 minutes, it's too long. But it was hours. And even until last night. <laughs> but praise God, my wife is relentless. She pursued me. She loved me. And she chose not to take it personal. And then I realized, dang, I probably need some healing somewhere in my life. Because that shouldn't have been that big a deal. Now I share that because I think somebody needs to hear that. And I share it because Jesus gets the glory. It's not done with me. I mean, nine powerful days of being used by God and one moment of my wife not respecting me enough in the tone of her voice shipwrecks this. I'm a man of God. I'm anointed. And yet, I'm a jar of clay that has moments of weakness and still needs healing and growth in my life. The story I want to close with is in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did you see? When did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you? A stranger and invite you in, in need clothes and clothe you. When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger and needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you truly, Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Right. 
Church, there are acres of diamonds all around us. And we have been commissioned to be diamond miners. Are you mining for diamonds? Have your eyes been open to the treasures all around you? I know, man, I get distracted, I get busy and, and, and just run through things and be like, oh, that's just an obstacle to the things I got to do today. But did Jesus ever live like that? Like Jesus had a plan. Do you understand? You having a day planner, that's a good thing. You having a schedule, that's a good thing. But Jesus never let his schedule stop him from the diamonds that he ran into. Church, let's not miss all the opportunities we have that God gives us to be diamond miners, to recognize the diamonds in our lives because it's treasure. Do you understand? People are treasure. People are what value, are what should be valued the most. It's what has eternal value, relationship, people. And yes, it's worth fighting for, okay? It's worth you getting over your hurtness, okay? Your, your, your whatever it is, anything that's blocked relationship, it's a big deal. You know so much so that God said this, get right with your spouse, husbands, or I won't hear your prayers. Do you need any other motivation to humble yourself, men, than God will not hear your prayers. He will not answer your prayers when you are not in relationship, right relationship with your wife. That's serious. Because it's serious to God. When you're offering a gift, to him and you recognize somebody else has issue with you you don't even have issue with the other person they have issue with you and guess what God says put that gift aside we'll get to that but first go and be reconciled do everything you can why because people are diamonds relationship is valuable and this is what the devil comes to do is to kill steal and destroy but when you recognize this is a diamond and it's a diamond in a lot of rough right now but it's a diamond in here and i'm not going to discard it i'm not going to just discard it relationships are not disposable like let me just move on no you've just you just given up the treasure and it takes time to get to the treasure. You, every, every year, every conflict, you're chiseling more of the treasure. And, 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 and you can't let just something happen and go, I'm just going to disregard it. Why? Because it takes time to get to treasure. You can't get to real, real deep treasure and valuable treasure, treasure in just a couple days takes time i got 24 years coming up or now yes 24 right 24 years okay <laughs> of treasure digging i can't walk away from that you can't get all that back so would you close your eyes for just a moment as we close Would you put your hand on your heart? What is your heart saying? What is your heart beating today? Is it full of his love? From this heart will flow rivers of living water. Water can expose, water can clean the diamonds.
in your own heart and in the hearts of others. Do you have a heart for people? Because if you have Jesus' heart, you have a heart for people. And if you don't have a heart for people today, you can get a heart from Jesus to do it. He's really good at heart surgery, heart transplants, making a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. That's what he came to do. That was the promise. We have to guard our hearts after he gives us a heart of flesh. We have to have it cleansed. We have to have his love flow through it to heal it. Now, would you open your eyes and look at your hands? Whose hands are these? Are they Jesus' hands? Are these hands for his work and his kingdom? When you look down at your feet, are they beautiful? Are they Jesus' feet? Does he have access to your feet to tell you where to go? When to go, when to stay, when to go right, when to go left? Who do you belong to? Are you a treasure box? Do you recognize the acres of diamonds inside of you? Do you recognize the acres of diamonds among you? Do you recognize the, da- the, a- the acres of diamonds all around you? If you'd say, Pastor Mike, I I want Jesus' heart. I want to give my hands and my feet to Jesus today. Would you lift up your hands? Because I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us to have his heart, have his love, and, and, and surrender our lives, our hands and our feet to him. God, you said in your word, you look throughout the whole earth whose hearts belong to you, Lord. And these hands, Lord, recognize these hands express that our hearts belong to you God and we're asking that you'd show yourself strong on our behalf that we may make your name famous Jesus that we may make you famous Lord you get all the honor you get all the glory God fall upon us your body your people today Lord forgive us for, for kicking stones in our lives, for kicking diamonds away from our lives, not recognizing how precious and valuable these people are and these situations are. God, forgive us, but give us eyes to see, ears to hear today. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your power. God, that we would be people that recognize we're diamonds. And Lord, that that we're diamond miners, Lord God, to bring the kingdom of God and your love to a hurting, lost world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. Excited to have you. And remember, you matter to us and you matter to God. And because you matter to us, we want to connect with you. So please be sure to fill out a connect card and let us know how we can be praying for you this week. And we'll see you here next week.